Okay, today's project's going to be, uh, I think we're going to work on the top rack for the trailer, the welding trailer. So let's walk over there and take a look at it. So what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to cut some square tubing, which will be this two and a half, so we can uh, slide the rack down in it. I'm going to weld it in each corner about 17 inches tall from the floor up. That way I can put a hole through it. And then it'll be six foot six tall. So we'll be able to put some ladders up there on the top. So there'll be one in each corner. And then I'm gonna make a frame that comes up, goes over, comes down. And then we'll have some cross braces going in it. So, but yeah, I've been needing to get that done. So I can get all my ladders. See, I got my ladders hanging all over the shop. So I'll be able to put my ladders up there on top just to carry them around in case you need ladders for something when you're welding on it. So I'll get back with you once I get the pieces cut up. All right, I'm cutting the, the uh, two and a half inch square tubing right now with this Evolution chop saw. <clears throat> this thing's got a lot of cuts on it. It's a good saw. Uh, I'm going to leave it running so you can see how easy it cuts through this, this square tubing. I mean, it's, I think it's, uh, three sixteenths thick. So I'm going to let you watch for a minute. quick that's a heck of a saw i bet you i've got i don't know between metal and, and aluminum on that blade i bet you i got a thousand cuts easy so it's definitely worth the investment the blades are i don't know last time i bought one about a hundred bucks but man you get a lot of cuts out of it so it's definitely worth it and i know they make a diablo blade that goes on them I might try that next or I might just stick with the uh, the evolution because it's been a great, great blade. Okay, what I did was now I marked a hole, inch and a half down, put a mark. I'm gonna uh, drill a hole all the way through and that's what's gonna bolt the top to the bottom once I weld these on. So, <clears throat> Just uh, really boring to watch a bunch of drilling, so I'm just gonna go drill these holes real quick and then I'll get back with you. Okay, so you can see they're going in the corners like this. I got it clamped up pretty tight. So now I'm just gonna run some 5P on it. This rod right here, it's a gray rod, it's a 5P plus. These are 6010. And then after I get it welded on there, I'll probably go around and put some low high on top of that. But put that on there good enough. I mean, it, 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 it'll work. But uh, you got to remember when you weld up something with 5P plus rods only, it's pretty, it's kind of a uh, brittle. So low high is always better. So let me get some of this welding on here and then I'll show you when I get done. Okay, this is the first one. <clears throat> Got it welded in the corner. I just got some weld. I went ahead and put a low high on it now. And then I just put like two welds down there. I mean, that's plenty to hold, you know. So I'm using all stick rod on this. I could uh, use MIG, but I don't feel like hooking up the hose and, and uh, hooking up the bottle and and to be honest with y'all, I got uh, little spools. My big spool that's in this machine here, this is a three-in-one machine. 
it does MIG, TIG, and stick. The spool in there is rusty, so it's no good. I'd have to go get a new spool, 30 pound spool for that. So I'm just gonna stick rod it. it it's slower, but in my opinion, you know, low highs, you know, it's pretty strong. You know, some people uh, like to MIG everything. And on this thin tubing, I might have to, but uh, I'm gonna go with the uh, stick rod for right now. So, but it is what it is. I'll get back with you. I got three more to weld on. Okay, so I got the four corners welded up. You can see that's how it is. So I went from the deck up seven foot, but it's gonna be six inches up there so and it's going to be two bars that way nothing can roll off the sides and then it'll be one brace going across that'll that'll bolt in right there then probably one right here that'll bolt and then one that'll bolt there so like this whole side will lift off by itself that side will lift off by itself so i mean it's definitely you know something you're not going to do by hand but you can uh you know, use a piece of equipment or use a chain fall or something like that. And then that way you could, I did it like that. So you could stack it up against the, the wall and it don't take up, like if you take it off the trailer, then it takes up the whole footprint of the whole trailer, you know, on the floor, if I'm welded all together. So I'm gonna make it to where this side comes off by itself, that side comes off by itself, unbolt, unbolt, unbolt. So well, that's where we're at right now. And I did that so so we're six foot six. So like if you want to get up in there and walk around, I'm six one, so you shouldn't hit your head. So I mean, I don't know anybody else that's gonna be up on there besides me and maybe somebody that's helping me, but there's not too many six foot six people that ain't professional athletes or something, you know. So but anyways, and then like I said, I got the holes like right here so i'll drill a hole through all those and that way it'll bolt and then you can remove it the only thing you won't be able to remove is going to be these these corner pieces here you know my gate's kind of tight but it was already bowed up messed up it's one of them fold down gates it broke years ago i bought this trailer used and i just welded these tabs on there so i need to really make a new gate for it and uh but i think if i make another gate i don't know if i'm going to make a tall one like that it just might be the bottom half or I might just cut that top half off because really and truly I don't never really haul nothing on there I got 20 foot trailers to haul any kind of uh you know tractors or my skid steer you know stuff like that my side by side anything like that I'll use my 20 foot trailer so but yeah once I get this top done so my ladders can go on there then the next thing's going to be is changing out this axle I think I'm gonna put a 5,000 pound axle on there. And uh, I've never done that before, but I mean, it can't be that hard. I'll figure it out, I'm sure. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, I'm gonna to have to jack the whole trailer up and then kinda of go from there and see what I gotta do. So I definitely might need to go with them. We're gonna go with bigger tires for sure because I want the trailer to see how it sits kinda of unlevel right now. So when it's hooked up to the truck, I want it to actually sit level for the machine so your oil don't go to one side. So right now with it, with it like that, so I'm probably gonna do a reverse flip. I'm gonna put the axle up under the leaf springs, but it's gonna be a 5,000 pound axle. That way it's higher up. And when I pull off somewhere, it's, it, it's, it's gonna be more level, I think. So, okay, well. That's what we did. Oh, uh, I'm about to cut the pieces in between the poles here. And what you do is, is uh, instead of measuring up here at the top for your piece, because those could be bowed out. So, so you measure like this is a pretty hard. So I measured from right here down to there. I got that measurement on this side. And then I got that measurement on that side. So that way, when you go to put it on up here, if this is bowed out, it's gonna pull it back to being what this is down here. So always remember that. If you're gonna 
pull a measurement for something up top like that, you go down at the bottom where it goes into the ground or welds to the beam or welds to the plate or whatever. And then that way, you know you're gonna be square. So your bottom measurement will be the same as your top measurement. And that way all your stuff's not all leaning out and messed up and everything. So, okay. Well, I'll get back with you in a minute. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the pieces. I don't think I'm gonna have enough square tubing. I only, only got one more piece. So, I'm probably gonna have to run to the metal yard in the morning and buy a couple more pieces to finish this up. And then, uh, and then I'll be glad to get this part done. I've been, been needing to get this done. I just haven't done it. Been putting it off, putting it off. So it's good to go ahead and get it done. But I'll get back with you. Okay. This is kind of what I got going on. This is going to be the side piece I was telling you about. See, I'm making it where it's six inches or so. So this should be six foot six from here and then the extra six inches. So I'm gonna put some pieces in between there to kind of stiffen that up. But this will be one side. So I got it all leveled up. I got it level going that way. I use a little clamp and a piece of, this is like fiberglass, thick fiberglass straight edge. I just clamp it underneath there so it holds it up flush and I'll get it all tacked up. You gotta make sure everything's level because if it's not level, then when you go to weld it up, it's all gonna be twisted and out of whack. But not saying once you weld it, it's gonna be a little warped or something too. So that's just part of it. You just gotta be careful and just don't start at one end and weld because it'll make it be like a banana. So, but anyway, so this is what I'm working on now. Like I said, I'm gonna have to go get some more square tubing tomorrow to do the other side. I'll go get that in the morning. Uh, but I got enough to at least get this one side done and uh and then we'll we'll go from there i'll show you i'll show you once i get the pieces all tacked in there and everything okay finish this one side so that's all it's going to be it's just going to look like that right there <clears throat> so it needs to be picked up and put in I only put two braces in it right here to separate it like this one here and this one here because like I said, at the ends, you're going to have one at the ends that go across. And then I'm going to put one in the middle. But what I'll do is I'll make it to where angle iron, like, laps over this. And then it welds to it. And then I'll put in a hole and probably just bolt this center brace in. And I'll center and I'll brace. Do the same thing with angle iron on the side. And then I'll have a gusset. And then the piece that goes across. And it'll be bolted through the angle iron, too. So that way, uh, like I said, we can take it apart. So the brace that goes across, like I said, will be unbolted. All right, man. Well, thanks for watching. I'll get back with y'all. Uh, like I said, I got to go get more material tomorrow, which speaking of that, I just called the steel house and this stuff has like gone up tremendously. When I bought these joints of two inch square tubing by eight, they were 20 something dollars a stick there. I just called them. $60 a joint now. That is crazy. So I better go buy my last three pieces while I can. All right, man. I'll talk to y'all later. Okay. It's a new day. It's the next day. Uh, I went and got three more pieces of square tubing to finish up the rack, the ladder rack. Uh, here's the one piece standing up right here. So that's the one side, that's this side of the trailer over here. So I'm gonna work on this side over here now. So, and look what else I got. Went ahead, went and got the axle, 5,000 pound axle and everything to do the axle swap. But that'll have to be another video. So, <clears throat> cause I ain't gonna have time. It'll be too long to put all this together. So right now I'm gonna go cut the metal, the tubing for the passenger side is uh, 11 foot seven and a half. So I'll get back with you in a minute. Okay, I got the pieces cut. I got it sticking up here, which that's gonna, that's gonna move in. And there'll be a two inch piece in there like that one up there. So I got this piece of <clears throat> square tubing at the bottom clamped. So that way it's, um, 
it holds it flush so you don't end up with a bad gap on both one side or the other and you know it's uneven so that kind of helps you if you do something like that then i leave this the square the c channel i mean the c clamps open like that so i can put a square in there and i make sure that make sure that's square and that side's square so i did the same thing over here so now i'm ready to to tack it up and then i'm gonna put in the two inch piece and um I'll move the, the square tubing where the two inch is gonna go, the two inch piece is gonna go. So then it'll sit in on that, squeeze it together, check square again, and then tack it all up and, and weld it out. I ended up putting caps on the top up there. So I gotta cut, cut some caps to put in there. So that way no water gets down in there, which I doubt I'll ever, ever even really paint this thing, but I might, you never know. So, okay, I'll get back with you in a little bit. Okay, I got the other one welded up. This is the other side. So, <clears throat> when this stands up, this is gonna be the center brace. I just took some angle iron and I'm gonna drill through both the angle iron and the square tubing. And then right here in the middle is gonna be a piece of two by two square tubing going to the other side do the same thing on the other side that way that'll be removable and then on the ends so i'll make the angle iron go all the way up to here but i'll bring it all the way down and then this will have a piece going up so it'll be a piece going across and then i'll have a couple of kickers on the front and the back but it'll all go to a piece of angle iron that'll bolt here on each side so, you know, it'll be angle iron and then the one piece that goes across and then from there, it'll have a kicker. So that kind of helps stiffen up when you got stuff up there. So, but now I looked all over in my shop. I got all kind of bolts, but I don't have bolts that'll go all the way through this two inch. So I'm gonna have to run to the hardware store and get some bolts. So, I think that's all I'm gonna do this afternoon. It took me a while, it took me half a day to go to the steel supply, pick up that square tubing, and I had to go all the way up into Houston off of the 610, uh, which is about an hour north of, of where I live and uh, to pick up that axle. So I got all that done, but it ate up half a day because one place was down in Texas City for the metal and that was going towards Galveston and then so basically drove almost to Galveston to get the metal, then all the way up into Houston to get the, to get the, the axle. That's gonna be my first axle swap. Kind of looking forward to it. So, cause I, I want to build a trailer for uh, my overlanding stuff and go and surf fish and everything. I want to build a little trailer to hook up to the Hummer. So this will kind of give me an idea on the axle deal, but it looks like it's gonna be pretty simple. You know, I just went with the six foot wide axle for a six foot wide trailer. And then you, you just, they give you these. So you weld these on wherever you, you know, need to weld them. But I'm gonna put the axle up underneath the little springs. So I'm gonna have to clamp this and uh, turn this bolt around to where it's at the bottom. That's for your, that's for your, well heck, it'll, it'll actually go without turning it around but you still want that nut on the opposite side of this so okay well let me go get some bolts so i can get these drilled i want to get all this stuff drilled before i have to stick it up in the air i don't really want to stick it up in the air and then drill up in the air so i gotta drill some holes in here down there and in the middle and then move this one out the way do the same thing and then i can build my my uh, end piece is in my middle piece. So it's coming along. Sorry about that, I had the camera crooked. Uh, it's coming along, just takes a little time, especially when you're working by yourself. I wish I could video. I'm kind of showing y'all what I'm doing, but you know, the, the um, actual welding part, I don't have nobody to hold the camera while I'm welding. I can put it in a tripod. It ain't gonna do nothing but blind you anyway. So, so I just, 
weld a little bit, cut a little bit, show you what I'm doing, and weld a little bit, cut a little bit, show you what I'm doing. So I'm sorry if uh, maybe one of these days I can get somebody to help me and and get a video while I'm you know doing some other stuff. So, all right, guys, I'll talk to you in a little while. Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> We're back at it this morning. I'm gonna start uh, drilling the holes for the bracing on each side. So I'm gonna put a hole here, hole here for the brace. And then we'll work on the embraces. I can't think, I'm, I don't know if I wanna do flat bar on here with the brace or if I wanna do the angle iron. So I'm not real sure what I'm gonna do on that yet. I might do the angle iron that way. It kind of stiffens it up both ways. I could put a hole like this way and then maybe put a couple of holes this way too, you know, but we'll see. Just a lot more drilling and stuff. So I don't think it's really necessary. I always over engineer everything I do. My wife tells me that all the time. So, okay, well, let me get some drilling going on. I'll get back with y'all in a little bit. Okay, <clears throat> I got the braces done. There's the middle brace, the front brace and the back brace. I went ahead and put a little little kicker on there just for, I don't think I really need it for ladders or anything, but if I ever carry something a little bit heavier, at least it'll help support it from sagging. I welded it to where I put flat bar on there and drilled three holes, so that way it bolts on. And then I, I got the holes drilled in this. <clears throat> so that way, like I said, whenever we go to take it off, that side comes off, that side comes off, front, back, and the middle. It all comes apart, and you can store it up against a wall or something like that instead of it taking up the whole footprint of the of the trailer. So, but, all right, man, well, I'll get back with y'all. Once we get, uh, I need some help to put it on. I can't do it by myself. It's kind of awkward, and it's big. Um, I guess I could bolt it all together, stand it up, bolt it together, and, and use my little hoist up there but I'll just wait till I get some help but I'll show you the finished product in a little bit but everything's all done uh, it'd be nice to get it painted but uh, I don't know it's not that big of a deal to me so all right I'll get back which one I get it all put on get a look at it next project's gonna be the, the axle swap so stay tuned. Okay, there it is. Got the rack up there for the ladders. Got the ladder sitting on there. Only thing I got left to do is drill the holes right here. <clears throat> but to be honest with you, it's such a tight fit to uh, get down in there. I probably don't really need it, but I'm gonna go ahead and put them in there anyways. But this, this really makes it to where you can add a bunch of stuff. I mean, you can put little hangers coming down from there to hold extra extension cords. Like I plan on putting, uh, I plan on putting a gas powered air compressor here. So I could actually hang like a hose, a hose uh, reel off of the top up there if I wanted to. I mean, but it's all removable. It's got bolts in it, which I sucked it down a little too tight. But, uh, but yeah, see, so it's all, bolts and then I'll run um, ratchet straps across there to hold the ladders. Right now I just got them all three right there. But I mean, if you wanted to go to the steel supply, it's only a 12, 12 foot trailer, but you could haul, you could get them to cut it in half if you need a 10 foot piece, or say if you need a 14 foot piece, you can get them to cut six, six foot off of it and uh, just put 14 foot up there and then have your six foot piece down here in, in the bottom of the trailer. You know, you could do that. Uh, you know, I wouldn't put a bunch of steel up there. It's not made to haul, a, you know, real heavy, heavy stuff. I mean, you could put, you could put quite a bit up there though. Don't get me wrong, but it came out pretty good. I like it. So I'm going to, I got it. Since I'm going to do the axle swap, I need to change up that, that tire mount. It'll be a bigger tire there. I think I'm going to stand it straight up and down instead of leaning it like that build a bracket that goes across the, the tongue there to hold that straight up and down. Move the toolbox to enough room, to, I'll put it wherever I can. I, I wanna put that 
gas powered uh, air compressor right there. So it's coming along pretty good. It's something that I've been needing to, to get to working on, uh, you know, for whenever I, you know, gotta go do a, a mobile welding job. I'm gonna start kind of pushing that again since uh, I know it's kind of the wrong time of the, the year with all the crazy stuff going on and everything, but I quit my job a week ago. So I'm gonna start doing doing my own thing. And I always said when I turned 50, I was gonna quit working for the man and do my own thing. So that's where I'm at. So I'm trying to get everything set up and everything ready to go and, and uh, you know, to hit little jobs here and there. Uh, but I like it. It's still got plenty of room. If I need to take that machine off, I can use my skid steer. I got a davit arm for it and, and it would fit in between there to hook up to it. And I can still pull that off, but also made it that tall. Like I said, so you, you can get up there and stand around and not hit your head. That was the main objective for it being that tall. So it's, you know, the top of that, uh, the bottom of the square tubing is six foot six. So you shouldn't hit your head. So, all right, man. Thanks for watching, and uh, don't forget to to like and subscribe. Uh, it's kind of hard to, to do these videos and work. They get so long, so that's why I kind of chop them up. I explain what I'm doing, then do it. And, I mean, if you want to watch welding videos, then, then there's vid plenty of videos out there to watch, you know, welding stuff. So I'm just kind of just chopping it up, explaining what I'm doing, then do it, then show what I did and explain my next step. And, and I, that's, that's kind of the process I'm doing for right now until I get better situated to, to actually set it up and let it run, you know, full time and watch me and stuff like that, which I've done that too. Don't get me wrong, but I just don't do a whole lot of it because it's only me. Uh, I hardly ever get any help or help to, you know, come out here and I don't have anybody to hold the camera the whole time that I'm, I'm uh, building something and, and, and trying to show something. So, but I hope everybody likes it. It's a good idea. Uh, anybody that's building a trailer, man, uh, shoot me a, a message on the video or whatever. I, I like to see what everybody else is doing too. That's where I get a lot of my ideas is going around YouTube and, and looking at stuff and thinking about it and like, man, would that work for me or do I need to, change this, change that, but it's for ideas. And I kind of like the idea that I, I bolt everything on this trailer to where if I ever want to go to a bigger trailer, then I just unbolt everything. Of course, I can't unbolt these, but it don't take long to weld new, new, you know, angles on the, or new pieces on the, a new trailer. So, uh, oh, and that's another thing too. This gate, which I know I talked about a little bit, but it hits pretty hard up here, so it's hard to unpin right there and it's bowed i mean like i said i got this trailer used so i i'm going to rebuild this gate straighten it up to where it's not that big of a deal and i'm also thinking about i'm going to go ahead and see that's that's the whole thing about bolting stuff on i think i'm going to move this back further to the back and then i'm going to put me another like a truck uh toolbox in there to hold more tools just uh why not you know that way, when I get that air compressor on there, I mean, I'm gonna wanna hold uh, like my gouging, my art gouger. I wanna hold probably like an uh, air impact, you know, some air tools, stuff like that. So why not have it on here? So it's, it's, that's the whole part about being mobile. You know, you try to carry as much stuff as you can, you know, that way you can get the job done without, without having to stop and, and run and go get this, run and go get that. Time's money, so. All right, well, I hope everybody enjoyed it, and I will probably upgrade. These are just regular bolts from the, from the hardware store. I'll probably upgrade those to, like, grade 8, just, just for the sheer factor. But, like I said, I don't, I don't plan on carrying anything super heavy up there, maybe one piece of angle iron or, you know, something like that. I mean, I got 20-foot trailers that carry a bunch of pipe and stuff like that. So, all right, well, thanks for watching. Talk to you all later.